What is up guys, welcome back to another Destiny 2 build session, where today showcase a look at the fame and not so fame Telesto Fusion Rifle. And today I have a very special build based on the exotic that I'm sure you all love. I'm sure many of you here know how powerful the Telesto is in both PvE and PvP, and how it can easily wipe out groups with his bolts, whether they stick on the target or if they miss. Except from the fact that the weapon has a knack for causing a ton of issues for Bungie, the Telesto is one of the best fusions to use if you avoid Warlock user because of some of the unique combos it can pull off for many encounters in game. And that's what today's video is going to be all about. I'm going to combine the destructive capabilities of Telesto with the mad ability regeneration on Nezrak Sin and then top it all off with Elemental World mods which I'm having a lot of fun over. This will in the end create a non-stop ability spamming and empowered Telesto build that honestly, I'm surprised I haven't seen more of this out of my adventures. It has a ton of flexibility in terms of class swapping, the weapons are very easy to get from the specific points in game, and everything here can easily take you into endgame content. No pressure, just a nice and very fun build to play around with when you don't want to be playing with anything competitive. So before we head in, if you enjoyed the video then I'll really appreciate it liking us up as it goes a long way for me. So the subclass I've chosen is the Atonement of Fission and we'll be using the subclass for its great effects on taking down groups of enemies in its Roman super form and its ability to regen on top of that that will also feed back into our grenades melee. Now not a lot of players use the following tree line that much since the nerf it received quite a while back which is understandable when the super doesn't feel that strong or tanky compared to its previous form. However, the subclass is still as strong and as powerful as everything else within the tree line depending on where and how you use it. PvP, it has uses but it's not the best unless you know how to master blink jumping. PvE though is where the subclass can thrive and be a destructive object that makes its uses hell of a lot more better. From testing ground the build, its main strengths lie in the ability regen you can prop from all different sources and with this linking back into your million grenades, we can feed back and loop the energy kills made to always have our abilities back at max or half. The Dark Matter perk states that void ability kills will grant you health, melee, grenade and class ability back and the amount you get is quite a lot. Combine that effect with Nezrak's in ability regen effects and then the Elemental World's passive regen over time and you pretty much have all your abilities up and running in seconds. This is great when you think about it as the subtree melee is actually strong and can one shot without further support, although I've added the heavy handed mod which works two ways for us, and our grenades act like a spread shotgun, but hits a lot more stronger than one and can nab multiple enemies in one. When you think about how much you use your abilities in game, the whole setup makes the most sense to use and abuse. Overkill? Perhaps, but in Destiny nothing is considered a overkill if they keep on coming back to fight you. We can also use the other two subclasses as well who also have strong perks catered to PvE content. But I personally believe in terms of great and close range crowd control, this is the best subtree and low that you'll want to aim for. As for weapons, your main weapon will be the Telesto at hand to help proc your exotics and your abilities on a constant basis, but from there, your primary and heavy can be left to your own devices. If you don't have an idea as to what to pick though, I have a few ideas as to how to build around it. With the Whispering Slab bow with quick draw and sympathetic arsenal, the idea I had in mind was to utilise my bow as a quick method of reloading all my weapons in one go when switching back and forth against certain enemies or facing a really tanky enemy. With my Telesto and Grenade Launcher, both these weapons are Void Affinity and if I wish to utilise the Elemental Mods, Nesraxon's perk and the Subtree's abilities, I will need to utilise all my weapons at once to get the most out of them. Now this can be very crazy at times between switching back and forth and the biggest issue you have when dealing with this is trying to keep up with reloading in between using your fusion and using your grenade launcher. This is where the perk Sympathetic Arsenal comes in as it allows you to auto reload all stowed weapons in gear back to max. This can be useful in a few ways such as dumping all your ammo in one go against the enemy, stow them, then use your bow to reload them and then repeat the process again and again. With how consistent the damage is with a powerful fusion and grenade launcher on your side, this will make it a perfect loadout for dumping a large amount of ammo onto a boss in a consistent fashion. For our secondary, I'm using the Telesto fusion rifle and as part of the build, we're going to build into the exotics for its benefits that will slowly work its way into our abilities which should then grant us some extra benefits on the side. 
With the use of Heavy Handed mod, we can utilize this secondary perk to reward us ammo when getting spotted by enemies, and this in many ways allows us to have a near infinite amount of ammo freely available to us for the Telesto, which will also activate the Elemental Armors mod to increase our chances of getting worlds drop. Because of how strong the fusions are, and how its effects can spread and nabby multi kills on the whim, this paired with the two mods alone will allow you to constantly regen abilities and ammo at a fast to moderate rate, and can pretty much nullify the use of needing any other weapons in your arsenal. I chose to use Telesto as it could produce orbs on the fly, even when not masterwork. This works in my favour again as this will trigger the heavy handed main perk and also reward me with melee energy every time I get a kill with said melee. Now, when you combine that with the Dark Matter subtree perk and Nesrax effects in the background, you're going to always have your melee ready, which also means you can stay close to grouped enemies more often and pretty much reap their rewards all the time. For Heavy, I've chosen to use the Crowd Pleaser Grenade Launcher with Killing Wind and Chain Reaction, and the point of the Heavy is to utilize this Chain Reaction perk to activate the Element Armor's mod much quicker when up against grouped enemies. Although I'll be using Telesto for getting kills and energy the most, the Heavy will come in handy when I can't get too close or else I'll get completely destroyed. The perk is quite effective though as it can either outright kill or injure enemies caught within its vicinity of the blast, and anything that can make our lives easier while fighting is a welcoming addition. For stats, we aren't going to need to fully invest or heavily invest in specific areas, thanks to the ability bonus we are getting that will be a constant source. With this being the case, this should be fairly simple and enjoyable area to build around, without much panic involved in terms of who needs to do what in what area. Uh, three stats that we focus on the most in the build will be Discipline, Strength and Intellect, and all three of these stats will float around the 50-60 to 60 ranges for an average cooldown. Like I said, thanks to the mod, Exotics and Subtree perk in play, we will not need to worry about heavily investing in one or two stats just to get the most out of them, which leaves us plenty of breathing room to customise how you like. In Activity, you're mainly going to be using your midi the most because of the extra benefits you're getting from the mod, Heavy Handed, and this will easily feed back into your grenades and super over time, to which you can then switch up to however you like at a later date. In this state, all you need to do is make sure you have your void weapons fully loaded and prepared, so you can keep the flow of abilities going and you should have these three key areas easily covered. Of course, not everything goes as planned and in some activities you may need to invest a bit more points just to keep yourself sustained. It will be in your best interest to invest in Discipline, as this will be the most active ability throughout whatever content you are in, and as you are using Atonement of Fission, we have access to two grenades. The first being your standard Vortex grenade with its area damage and duration, and then we have the charged version that allows us to use it in close range with a much stronger damaging effect. Both of these will help when you eventually run out of secondary ammo, and the amount of energy you get back should be good enough to extend your survival longer. Now onto the mods, and these are what I chose to aim for, for the best chances of making the build feel comfortable to the user and to myself. For head, I've chosen discipline, hands-on, the elemental orders mod. Arm, I've chosen recovery, fastball, and font of wisdom mod. Chest, we have discipline, because of damn the times two, and taking charge mod. A leg, we have minor discipline, invigoration, and heavy-handed mod. Bond, we have bomber. Distribution and Elemental Armaments mod. As a major fan of Fusion Rifles, it's quite nice to solely rely on just them and have a ton of fun with them considering how powerful and dangerous they can be in generally any activity. Telesto is one of those weapons that I used to use a lot of back in D1 and the earlier years of D2, but kind of dropped off from there with me as I explored a bit more outside the scope of weapon variety. Now I have found the one true thing that made me enjoy Telesto from the get go and that is the sheer power and customizations you can get with combining the weapon with something like Nezorax. Both of these in hand will allow you to easily regen abilities on the fly while also putting up a sheer amount of force when being faced against. Whether PvE or PvP, both of these in hand can be very troublesome the moment they are faced against. With that being the case, I thought it would be a really great idea if I could build into the two and create a near infinite loop of energy and ammo back to me to create a mini void reactor that's bursting with energy. The idea here was to utilize Telesto's void affinity with the Nesvax Synesotic trait to increase ability regen on a passive take, but I decided to amp up a bit by combining the Elemental World mods and the Tunnel Efficient subtree perks for greater effects. 
With the Elemental Wells, I utilize the Elemental Armors mod, Ordnance, and from the Wisdom mod to gain a plus 20 energy to our ability and a 30 second passive regen to all of our abilities, while on top of Nezrak Sin's ability in the background. While both of these are active, I found that the Dark Matter perk from the subtree also grants us ability energy and health regen upon using our grenades on melee. So on top of the Wells and Sin's perk, we are pretty much overflowing with energy as we go, and as long as we keep one of our two of our abilities fully stacked, this will never slow down for us. I also mentioned earlier how we can utilize the Heavy Handed mod to not only gain faster melee energy via Telesto's multi kills, but also how we can gain ammo to our reserves for a secondary if we are surrounded by 3 plus enemies. This will greatly increase the chances of us using Telesto's more often and having abilities there when we need them most. This overall will create a pretty simple but very effective PvE build that you can carry around and go to town on in whatever enemies you face against with heaps of passive occurring in the background. Now as Guardian games are active, we can utilize this build to create tons of laurels at our expenses, and this with many other ability spamming builds will give you the leverage of being the best crowd controller in game. Gambit or Strikes will see the most effectiveness out of the build if you are an average player of these activities, while at the same time can be used in Nightfalls or PvP, but of course require you to change a few things up, as well as the well mods which won't work in PvP at all. One thing to note though is that it's very easy to run out of special ammo when using Telesto at times, if you use it too recklessly. Now this can be easily avoided by switching to your primary and using that until you get more ammo, or if you have the space you can add the special finisher mod from the bond section to allow you to generate a special ammo on the fly, but this will require you to use up one third of your own super. Now that shouldn't be a problem though, as you're going to be swimming in all sorts of energy coming your way. And I'm sure you're going to be able to find some use to build one way or another in whatever activity you have in mind. But if you're finding a way or reasoning to use Telesto again, this is probably one of the best PvE builds to go ahead and try out. So if you enjoyed the video, then please do leave a like and a sub, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny and Titanfall content. If you did that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you all in the next one.